my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. How are you? It's great to see you and welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a recipe that I first learned about way back in February and it's for corn ribs. Have you seen corn ribs? You probably have now that we're into summer and corn is actually here. <laughs> I wanted to make it way back in February, but corn is not in season and the only corn I could find was frozen corn on the cob and that wouldn't be a very fair assessment or test I feel like because corn on the cob is one of my favorite things in the world. It's so simple, it's so easy and it really highlights the beauty of summer corn. So I'm going to be making corn ribs today using local and in season corn. The preparation is actually very simple. We're going to be taking the corn and we're going to be cutting it in an interesting way. We're going to be cutting it lengthwise and lengthwise again so we have it quartered lengthwise and then we're going to season it, air fry it or bake it. I'm going to be air frying it and then it will curl to look a bit like a rib, a spare rib. But made out of corn. Today's recipe inspiration comes from a TikTok video at Spice Nice. I'll put a link down below to the original and the general inspiration comes from, in terms of flavoring, comes from elotes which is a Mexican street food style of corn. It is absolutely delicious, seasoned with butter, mayonnaise, chili, lime. Fantastic. An excellent way to have corn. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to need is some fresh corn. Mm, 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 mm got loads of it. Ears of corn. Wait, some of these are upside down. <laughs> like this. Diddy! <laughs> so I've got four ears of corn. This, of course, is not all going to fit in my air fryer. I think I'll begin with two. First thing we're we'll do is going to shock the corn. Take the hulls off. I love that squeak. Take the silt, oh, look at this. This is called butter and sugar corn, and it is called that because it's yellow and white, and oh, so very sweet. Yeah, look how beautiful that ear of corn is. Ah. Why did they call it ear of corn? Etymologists, let me know. Alrighty, so <laughs> there's that. There's one, we've got silk everywhere. Did you know that there's silk goes, travels down to each corn, each little niblet here is connected to a strand of silk. So weird, corn's odd. Corn's oddly good, oddly good. So I grew corn for the first time this year. I grew a glass gem variety and uh, it managed to survive the hurricane Henri that came through. Actually, by the time it reached us, it became a tropical storm, I believe. Henri, thank you for your visit and thank you for being kind and gentle to us. <laughs> I was worried my corn, I've been growing it all summer and then we're coming to the last bit like, oh no, a hurricane is approaching. <gasps> my 12 feet stock of corn. <laughs> but they managed to stay erect. I like that. I like that. All right. So two beautiful ears of corn. Now we need to cut this lengthwise into quarters. Now most videos I've seen, people stand the corn upright like this and cut it down this way. To do that, it seems pretty unstable because the corn doesn't want to stand up. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim off the end. Little sacrificial end. So now the corn stands up. That's nice. We like our corn standing up. I'm going to take the knife and this is what Spice Nice does. They cut it this way and that's what they recommend. Yeah, it's actually not hard to cut it off. Sharp knife, just go vertically and be patient, right? Rock, and there it is. Look at that, I've never cut corn like that before in my life. So, two halves and then cut the other one. And also they cut it this way, which seems terribly dangerous. So I'm gonna cut it this way. It is hard to cut this way, but that other way seems so like a great way to cut yourself. It is hard to cut it this way. So I'm going to try doing that and then go from the other side. Okay, so one half, one half. Now we have 
a quarter. We have a little corn boat. But look, we can see the interior of the corn here. Look at how it's attached to the cob. How cool. Wait. And I'm having slight flashbacks to when I attempted the hot dog as a bone of the corn, the Jenna Marbles video. And I think there was a fact that there are 22 rows of corn all around the corn. 22, 21. Anyways, that was a bit of a nightmarish video. <laughs> I'll put a link down below in case you're curious. Because I know there are a lot of masochists out there. All right, we're gonna, since this one's a little wider, I'm gonna try it this way. Don't put your, do not hold the corn because then you'll cut yourself, okay? Just keep your fingers out of the way. All right, we have four. Set these aside, repeat. We're gonna do a little sacrificial butt cut. Stand it up. Let's try a cleaver this time. equally better or worse. Mm, worse because it's not straight. Ugh. So when you have your initial cut, make sure you try to get it as half as possible. Ugh. All right. So these ones are going to be a little bit different. That one's a little bit different in it. That's all right. Still corn and still delicious. So I want long ribs. I've noticed in photos, the longer the piece of corn, the more it curves and looks more like a rib. So I'm gonna keep mine longer. If you want yours shorter, by all means, cut them in half. Okay. So cleaver actually does pretty good work of things. Alrighty, now I'm gonna feed those to my chickens. How is it? Good corn? Sorry, didn't mean to bother you. Yeah, good corn. Okay, now we're ready to season the corn. I've got myself a large bowl here, and we're gonna drizzle some oil. Like, you know, that much. Black pepper. I like a lot of black pepper. Garlic powder. Oh, you know, as little as much garlic as you like. It's probably about a quarter teaspoon, half teaspoon, depending on your taste. And onion powder. Oh, mine's clumpy, hang on. About the same amount. And chili powder, as much as you like. And depending on how hot your chili powder is, more or less. Probably adding about an eighth of a teaspoon here. And I'm gonna add half a lime. Actually, that's a quarter of a lime. <laughs> Put that in there. Give that a little bit of a swizzle. Oh, cannot forget some salt. About a half a teaspoon. Mm. For this amount of corn, I'd say a quarter teaspoon because I'm only gonna be doing probably an ear and a half. So adjust these seasonings to the amount of corn that you are making. We just want enough to coat all the pieces. Okay, so there's that. And here are my corn bones. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna toss my corn in there. So I'm doing, I'm gonna toss six in here. Swirl them around, give them a little toss. Make sure each one is coated can really get everything in the nooks and crannies by using a pastry brush and rub everybody with the seasoning. It smells great already. That lime <laughs> impregnated, like look, it's in all the cracks. It's like the mortar. Oh, just splattered it all over my chest. Awesome. At least I'm not wearing a white shirt for once. Although I don't own very many white shirts. Alrighty. So we'll let that sit while I preheat my air fryer to 400 degrees. So let me do that. So air fryer, air fry. I'm gonna do eight minutes about at 400 degrees. I'm gonna start. 
This air fryer is very loud, but it is what it is. So eight to 10 minutes, depending on how done you like your corn. I like my corn a little less done. I don't like overcooked corn. So eight minutes, preheat first. And then when it says add food, I'm gonna add the food, you know? All right, now we're going to add the corn. Into the basket. So much quieter. All right, one, two, seeing this? Hear that sizzling? Yeah. Okay, see you in eight minutes. Alrighty lovelies, the air fryer just beeps. The corn ribs should be done. Halfway through the cooking, I did give these a flip. So let's see how they look. All right. Look at this. Now, this one curled beautifully. Look at that. Looks like a rib a rib rib. These are cooked. Look, they're already starting to get shriveled on the outside there. So that is very well cooked for me. I, as I said earlier, don't like my ribs to be, don't like my corn to be overcooked. So I'm gonna cook this piece a little longer. A couple of my ribs are a little bit wider than my others, so I took out the skinnier ones that have curled nicely and are definitely cooked, and I'm gonna give those a couple more minutes. So while that's going, let's talk a little bit about cheese. I'm gonna be using cotija. It crumbles beautifully. So this is, let me show you how, it just crumbles in your finger. It just crumbles in your fingers like this. You just pinch it and it just crumbles beautifully. Look at that. It's got a funky smell to it, like cheese does, and it is very, very salty. Mm hmm Very, very briny and salty. And while it smells kind of funky and Parmesan-y, the flavor isn't as strong as you might expect. I've read that you can use Parmesan as a substitution, but Cotija has a slightly different texture. It's a little bit more wet, yet crumbly, a little bit of a bounce to it. But I would say they're similar in the sense of the kind of salty intensity, but delicious. Okay, so 38 seconds. Okay. Alrighty, now we've got some more curl. And that's what we want because we want these to look like ribs after all. So nice. Curled, corny, and there's a little bit of kind of trying on the edges. Nice. Okay, artfully arrange those on your plate. So while these are hot, we're gonna rub these with some butter. Now I didn't want to put butter in the air fryer because it would have burned and burnt butter. Brown butter is good, but burnt butter is not good. So we're gonna rub that with butter, great. Next, we're gonna use some mayonnaise or mayonnaise. I'm just gonna squirt it for ease onto each little rib. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take our cheese. Then we can slather. The mayonnaise, of course, is gonna add a ton of flavor, but it's also going to act as the glue for our cheese. Now we're taking our cotija and sprinkle that all over. Now we're gonna finish with a shake of chili powder. Oh, 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 oh. So beautiful. A little bit of heat and a little bit of cilantro if you like. It adds not only color, but a ton of flavor. And put my lime wedges on the side because that's what I'm gonna squeeze on when I bite into that. Alrighty, my lovelies, the corn ribs are complete. Now let's finally give them a taste and see if they taste as good as they smell. Look at this. I love how it bends like that. Yum, 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 yum. Okay, before I bite into it, I'm going to squeeze some lime juice on there and then a little extra shake of chili powder. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go. 
いただきます。Really good. The corn is packed with flavor. This is cooked more than I usually cook my corn in the cob. I place mine into rolling boiling water for about four minutes. I love how it pops in your mouth. This is a little drier. This reminds me more of like barbecue or roasted corn, but it's still delicious. It's sweet. The kernels are small and succulent. And this is just packed with flavor. You can taste the briny, salty cheese, a little bit of mayo in there. The chili powder adds a little tiny bit of heat, and then you've got the acidity from the lime. That goes so well with the butter and the mayo. For those of you that are concerned about the mayo, don't be. Just put it on there and try it. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. I do have to say, I'm not used to taking such little dainty bites when it comes to corn on the cob. I always feel like I really have to bite into it. But with this, you can just take dainty little bites and get every little bit of corn off. It's really great. Well, I didn't get all of it. It's a very efficient way to eat your corn nice and clean. My father would definitely approve. This is flavor packed. If I would make one adjustment, if you're using cotija cheese, I would skip the salt in the initial kind of seasoning. The cotija cheese is plenty salty enough, but altogether is so stinking delicious. Mm -hmm. And really easy to make. Mm -hmm. mm. So what's the point of the whole corn rib thing? Well, I think it's a novel way to present the corn. It's a kind of fun way to eat it. It doesn't take much time to cook or to prepare. But in terms of what really makes this recipe work for me, it's all of the elote seasoning on the corn. It's such a beautiful combination of flavors. I think that's really what is the star in this recipe is all that seasoning. So if you don't wanna go to the lengths of cutting your corn like this, if you don't have an air fryer, or if you just don't wanna even do corn ribs, at least try the elotes preparation for corn because it is just so good. One of my absolute favorite ways of eating corn. So delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But corn ribs are very fun to eat and a very interesting vegetarian analog to the experience of biting meat, or in this case, corn off a bone. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect, actually, for a, a barbecue picnic. It'd be great to prep all these and then just barbecue these on the grill. Mm -hmm. Fast and easy way to cook it, too. It would cook, you know, in a quarter of the time of, of actual corn on the cob. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. One more note, please make this recipe when corn is in season. It will taste infinitely better than corn in February, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. All right, my lovelies, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that one. I hope you learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye. <laughs>